Hello and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. If you're uh, joining us, we're trying to get to the red planet Duna. In the last episode we were able to get our uh, approach vectors here for Duna and here we are in Duna's gravity well and we are going to see if we can get into stable orbit around it. So if you see here we are kind of far away. We have a nice equatorial orbit going around here so far. So and we can see our periapsis is 428. And now here's you got two options. One, we can either go right to periapsis, place a maneuver node, and pull retrograde until that comes all the way in. All the way into circularize, right about there. Now that's going to cost, if you notice in the bottom, 722 meters per second of delta V. And let's look over here to the left, flight engineer. If you have the vessel tab touched in here. It tells us actually how much delta V total that this ship we have has left in it. Now you got to figure we have to. It's budgeting in the fuel for the lander as well as the fuel for the stage that got us here. So we can't really rely too much on how much fuel is left in this whole thing because half of it's going to go to the lander. So we figure we got about half the fuel left, about uh, you know 1,200 meters per second. We don't want to spend that precious fuel breaking around this planet when we can let air do it for us. So we're going to get rid of that node and we're actually going to bring this periapsis inside Duna's atmosphere. And how far in you might ask? Well, um, in enough on Kerbin to do that would be something around uh, you might want to go maybe 50 to 40 me uh, kilometers into the atmosphere on Kerbin if you wanted to do an air capture air capture being the maneuver that will cause this this escape orbit here to bend back into a stable orbit. Um, but here on Duna the atmosphere is a lot less, it's a lot less powerful and it's a lot lower. I think the atmosphere starts at around 48, 49, 50 kilometers. So we're going to want to pull that in way further than we would on Kerbin to air brake. We want to make this thing, we want to make it pr approximately around, believe it or not, 11 to 12 kilometers in. Now, see, we have, this is kind of in the way, we can't really see, but, uh, yeah, that's kind of annoying, but we're going to just work with it here. Here we are, 48, we want to go even further in, 39, like I said, we're going to get to about 11, 11, here we go. All right, so here we go, let's point the ship at our node, <clears throat> and as you can see, the blue reticle here is pointing our angle of the ship. We're basically going to be thrusting straight, uh, you know, to the left here, and it's going to force us to be pushed closer to Duna, that's the whole point. And it's only going to take 9.8 meters per second, so here we go. And there it is, done. I just noticed something funny here. It looks like the f it's borrowing fuel from our lander stage for some strange reason. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not really sure. <laughs> so we, we're going to have to make sure before we undock that we put fuel back into the lander, otherwise we will be screwed. We'll be left on the surface of Duna without enough uh, thrust to get off. Okay, so let's see what we did here. Get rid of that node. We brought it down to 15, we're going to go just a little further, 11, we'll try 11. Now I'm going to do a quick save and let's just say something horrible happens such as uh, we went too far into the atmosphere and we actually crash, we wanna, we're going to want to load that thing. <laughs> uh, and let's say we didn't go further deep enough into the atmosphere and we have to end up spending gas to break, we don't want that either. So let's just see how we go, we're going to now warp time to move in on Duna. And you can see it's going to start getting closer and closer. Just be careful because it's going to come up fast like this. Remember, as you get closer to, to the planet, it's going to go faster and faster. There's Ike, Duna's moon right there. And let's just double check something. We have our orbit going around it's a little bit low for the equator. I might just put a node in here somewhere. Might just pull this upward just a little bit. No, that's not really going to do it. 
There we go, that's gonna cause us to go more around the equator, and it's barely any thrust at all. I'm just gonna make a little correction. And it's okay to make these little corrections. Uh, NASA does it all the time, I'm pretty sure. Little, just little correction burns. Again, we're just making sure that that orbit goes right across the equator. Because I'd like to land around the equator somewhere. Alright, that's good. And let's just check. It's still about 11. It's almost 12, 12 uh, kilometers. That's okay. So let's get back to it. Go to 100 times speed. So we're slowly flying in towards Duna now, getting a little bit closer. Now as we get closer in here, something you really want to not forget to do, I'm just going to go back to one time speed, you're going to want to pull those solo, uh, solar panels back into your ship. Press the one and two keys. Because if you don't do that, the air resistance from the atmosphere is going to cause them to just break apart and then your ship will be without power. Won't be good for you. I'm also going to point uh, prograde in case something horrible happens. For example, um, maybe we went too far into the atmosphere. We're going to want to burn to speed up to get out of that mess. I'm just going to put the orbital indications on. Now this is going to read us all the information. Apoapsis height, periapsis height. So let's speed in here. Enlin Kerman and Nedald Kerman. Alright, so we're just hitting the atmosphere now, so it turns out it's about 41 kilometers. I was off by a little bit. So you can see that's way closer to the ground than Kerman's is. I'm just going to do a little physical time warp. And we seem to be coming over some mountains. Let's see, hopefully we don't smash into them. Looks like we're going to just... just raise them if, if if we're lucky. Let's see. Hopefully we won't graze them at all. Alright, we're getting really far into it now. Now we're starting to break. If you look at our surface speed, it's starting to come back down. And let's look at our orbit information. This is going to start bending, hopefully. We're almost at the periapsis. So, you know, I... I just get this feeling that we didn't come deep enough to the atmosphere, but we're just barely grazing. We're just skimming through the atmosphere here. We are just barely off the ground. And we're just about at the periapsis. Okay, now it's starting to bend. We see it's starting to bend now. That's what you want. It's going to bend so far, and then it's going to come into a loop. So we're already on our way out again. That's okay, because... Whoa! See that? Now it's coming way inside. So I might flip back to prograde again, because it looks like... If I don't do something, we might crash. So we'll just keep that ready, just in case. It's coming in. It's starting to slow down, but I don't know if we'll make it. We can watch up here the apoapsis height is a thousand kilometers and falling. Now we're at 900,000 meters. We're going to want that to end up around, you know, at least at a hundred. So I think we're going to be okay. I think we'll be just fine. We'll see how we go. Yeah, we're getting out of the soupy stuff now. In fact, yeah, we did that just right, I think. You can't really get much better. I mean, you can, but... And you also notice that the periapsis is also lowering, so... Something important that we shouldn't forget to do is when we get out to apoapsis, we're going to want to boost that periapsis out of the soup. We're going to want it out of that atmosphere, otherwise we'll come back around, and that apoapsis will just sink right into the planet, and we don't want that, because... This entire ship was not designed to land, only the top lander part. So we're just going to physical time warp here. It's coming into 300. Yeah, that was that was pretty good. That was pretty damn good. Getting out of the atmosphere. It's 
soon as we clear the atmosphere, we'll deploy those panels in. You don't want to forget that. Yeah, we, we made it. Good. So we'll just put a little maneuver note here. And remember, we're going to boost that out. I'm going to say maybe not to 100. Let's go to... Let's go to 55. Something like that. That's probably okay. Alright, we can go back to regular time warp now. And there we go. So we're swinging around. We're going to get to the apoapsis and do a little prograde burn. There's Ike. Now, Ike is probably one of the coolest bodies to land on. And I say that because if, if you can get a spot that faces Duna... Oop, we just passed it. Because I'm sitting here talking. That's alright, we'll come back and we'll do a little burn. Just gonna push it out to about 55. So I want it... I, I want like a very low Duna orbit. And the reason being is, well, the lower the orbit is, the less we're going to have to burn to get off the surface again, to catch up to the orbital ship. You don't want that thing out there too far, because then that uh, lander vehicle is going to have to burn a lot more to get back into orbit. Alright, we're just going to circularize now. And we'll just speed up to that point. You notice as you get closer to the planet, it doesn't let you time warp as fast. And that's just a safety thing, It's so you don't accidentally go smashing into the planet by time warping. Alright, gonna burn in about 15, maybe 14 seconds. Here we go. Our little Duna Explorer ship. And before I forget, we'll deploy those panels again. Out they go. Using those atomic engines with their 800 specific impulse. Using that fuel very, very efficiently. Alright, let's look at the map. Get ready to shut down. Alright. There we are. 55 by 55. Not bad at all. Alright. So, let's do... let's see. Now I'm gonna... before I forget, I'm gonna transfer fuel into this ship here. We want the most fuel to go to the lander, because that's what's gonna burn up the most fuel. We don't really have to worry too much about the uh, return vehicle. We don't need that much thrust to get back to Kerbin from this point. So, like, the, the amount that it has right now, 300, that's probably plenty. That's probably, mo that's way more than enough, because if you, you think, too, we have these outer fuel tanks. So don't worry, we, we over-budgeted with fuel, which is, you know, that's what I like to do. <laughs> Alright, so let's see, we have the two guys in the lander. And now, because we put a probe right here on this ship, we can just leave this thing when we undock. So, in fact, let's get this thing undocked right now. Decouple the node. Boom, there we are. So I'm going to just square bracket back to the uh, return vehicle here. and just I'm just going to RCS away from it. Just going to get away from it. And we can do that because we have the probe in here. We can control this ship electronically. So something that we always kind of want to do, um, let's point this ship either north or south. Let's point it north. And the reason we do that is as the craft rotates around the planet the ship's gonna rotate but if you put it if you put the ship facing perpendicularly to your orbit in other words we're orbiting left to right if you point the ship up and down it's not gonna rotate too much that docking port's gonna stay pointed north no matter what and that's what you want when you come to dock with a ship you don't want it to be rotating around on you and if you watched my rendezvous video that's kinda what happened um, just because I got sloppy with it, but this is the real way. You want to always point it either north or south. Whatever your preference is. I'm going to go back to the ship here, 
and now we can control this we have our two Kerbal knots in here and we're ready to pick a spot to land. Now I'm just going to mess with the staging because I don't want those uh, parachutes to deploy with the engines. In fact, I'm just going to manually activate them because I don't trust it. Sometimes funny stuff happens. There we are. So we got a full tank of fuel. We got our engines activated. Let's pick a spot to land. Preferably going to want to land in the light side just because it's better to see. Now, let's see. I know there's an anomaly in one of the craters, and I believe it's this crater right here. It's kind of dark, so we can't see it. Uh, so we're not going to land there. There's definitely a face on Duna. And uh, maybe in another video, in another series, we'll go there. But for this time, let's land somewhere where it's kind of flat. We don't want to land on these mountains. Maybe we'll take it right around this little flat zone. So let's see. We'll do something like that. That looks like a nice flat area to land our ship in. It's only going to cost us 272 meters per second of thrust, which is hopefully not too much in this. Alright. And so another reason we pushed that ship out of the way was in case we have to make any thrusts. We don't want to smash into it. If you watched my um, one of my moon videos, I accidentally did just that. <laughs> Luckily... Nothing got damaged, so it was all okay. But, uh, you just don't want to take that chance. So, one of the only problems about being this far away, or this close to the planet, we can't time warp faster than 10. So, this might take a while. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pause this video here, and when we come back, we're going to be ready for our breaking burn. Here we are, back with a beautiful sunrise over Duna. We're just about at our burn vector here. It says it's going to take a minute and 11 seconds, but I think that's a little mistake and it can't be that long. So when it gets to 30 seconds away, I'm going to start the engine and see what we have. Point this right there. And just going to give it a little burst just to see yeah, it's, I thought so. So it's going to take about 15 seconds, so we can wait a little bit. Not too long, though. Right about now. So we're doing what's called a breaking burn, and what this is going to do is slow us down enough so that we actually are in a crash course with the surface. I'm going to go right about there. It's not quite where we had it, but the planet's going to rotate underneath us a little bit. Plus, the air is going to start slowing us down, so it might pull us a little further in than we thought. The only thing left to do now is just wait. So let's just do a little time warp. Coming a little closer here. And we're going to hit the atmosphere pretty soon. As soon as we do that, we will deploy our landing legs. Here we go. Press the G key a couple times, and we'll get that gear out there. All right, do a little physical time warp. Let's just check the map again. So that darker colored area of rust red is where we're gonna aim for here. And there's our Duna Explorer probe. Continuing to head out. I can't quite see it here, but it's there somewhere. It's out there somewhere. Above us, in front of us a little bit. Actually, there it is right there, that little red speck right by the sun. 58, 58 kilometers away. That's going to continue to orbit until we're ready to rendezvous with it. And here's our course here. So what I've done is I've right-clicked all the parachutes. They normally deploy altitude 500, but since Duna's atmosphere is a lot less powerful and it's a lot closer to the ground, I've moved it up to 850. I could probably mess with the minimum pressure too, but I'm not quite sure uh, if, if I want to do that. I'm just going to leave that one alone and see what happens here. Because sometimes if, you, if you're if you heading towards the mountains, the parachutes just never seem to deploy on Duna. And so we don't want that. All right, we're coming in now, about 10 kilometers up. Let's check the real altitude on here. No track yet. 
So what I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to hit the space bar. And there goes our parachutes. Still no track yet. So you can see our, our surface velocity is lowering. And I'm just going to start thrusting. Because we're getting very close. It's going to try to kill that lateral speed. Also, when our chutes deploy, we don't want to damage our spacecraft. Yep, we're getting there now. There she goes! So we did a little braking burn, just because I knew that sometimes when your parachutes deploy and you're going really, really, really fast, it'll actually rip your whole spacecraft apart. We don't want that to happen. So our true altitude is 500. Again, we're using our radar altimeter. Ooh, look at that. It is, this is a nice lander can, too. <laughs> So again, let's see, let's use the sun. Oh, there's Ike. Oh, we chose a good spot. Okay. Sun's over there, so our shadow's going to be on this side. And there it is. We have three pretty large shoots, but don't trust them on Duna because, look, our speed is still 12 meters per second. If we hit the ground at this speed, it would be too much. Something would break off. Probably the engine. Here we are, coming in on almost 100. Just going to start thrusting a little bit just to bring that speed down. We're just about down. Just about there. Bring that speed right down. Not too much. And X. There we are. We have landed on Duna. And there it is. Doesn't she look pretty? I just love this planet. I'm so envious of these Kerbals. And there's Ike. And we'll show you what Ike does on Duna in a second, so let's get the ladder out. I'm just going to do a quick save, because, you know, you never know in this game. Strange things have happened. Alright, there's our ladder. Now, it doesn't quite reach the ground, and, you know, I probably should have uh, tested this, but to be honest with you, we got lucky. We're on Duna, so we can always jetpack that little tiny distance. We can probably jump it, too. So who shall be the first Kerbal on Duna? Should it be Enlin Kerman or Ned Bald? It's going to be Nedbald Kerman, because I like that name, Nedbald. So, there he goes. Let's get him down. Here he goes, Nedbald, are you ready? And there he goes, there he goes, the first Kerbal on the surface of Duna, at least in this particular universe. And he's jumping for joy, he's so happy. He's going to run out here. And he's gonna he's gonna take a surface sample that uh, has no scientific value, but for you guys playing career mode, it's gonna have lots of value. Also, an EVA report would be nice. We're gonna plant that flag just because it's nice to do it. All right, for Kerbin, he says. Site name: Ned Bald Land. For Kerbin and all Kerb kind. There he is. Alright, so let's go back to the craft, pressing the square bracket key. Let's get Enlin out. It's Enlin's turn. He deserves to stretch his legs too. He's been on this long, long month, many months long journey. And there he is. Kind of do a do a high five, Kerbal style. All right, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see, we we get a lot less thrust here on Duna than we do anywhere else. Uh, or almost on his head. Oop 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 oop. And he's on his head, sort of. There they are, together, mucking around on the surface of Duna. So there's Ike. Let's see. Let's watch what Ike does. Let's do a little time warp. 50x. 100x. <clears throat> hmm. 1,000x. Gee, the sun's moving. Ike is not moving. What could be going on here? It's about noontime on noon on Duna. Ooh, 
Ooh, that was nice. Had a little eclipse right there. <laughs> Ike is just is just hovers there, and there's a specific reason for that. And if we if we go to orbital view view here, here <laughs> I can talk. You see that Ike is in a perfect uh, what do we call that geosynchronous orbit? In other words, it's revolving at the same rate that Duna's turning, rotating. As Duna rotates, Ike revolves at the exact same speed. So in essence, the net result is we always see the same face of each other. Duna sees the same face of Ike. Ike sees the same face of Duna. So if you're landing on Ike, and you get a spot where Duna's kind of right on the horizon, Duna's just frozen there, just hangs there, never quite moves. And God, it's just such a sight. I'm sure we'll go there at some point. So let's go back. Let's see what a night looks like on Duna. We'll let that sun go up. And we'll let that sun come down. A little sunrise on Duna here. Just as pretty, if, if not more pretty, on planet Kerbin. Night falls again on Duna. Sun is down. Just waiting for those stars to come out. Man, that is freaky. I don't know about you guys, but that would kind of freak me out if the moon just sat there. Again, it reminded me of that game, uh, if you ever played Z Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, where the moon just kind of hovers there, and every day in the game it gets closer and closer to the planet. And, oh, look at that. That is just pretty. And you know what? That's that's a screenshot right there. We're going to take that screenshot. <laughs> Ike hovering above right there. Alright, so there we have it. We've landed on the surface of Duna. I think we're just about out of time now in this little video. So if you're going to join us next time, we're going to learn how to get off this planet, re-rendezvous with our return craft, and get the heck back to Kerbin. But until that time, I guess I should say, uh, fly safe. But that's what Scott Manley says, so... <laughs> I guess I'll just say, have a good one.